Okay, let's get right at it with House Republican Conference Vice Chair. He's Congressman Mike Johnson, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. We've got a hot segment right now. Congressman, first to you. Talk to us about the subpoena power, the power to grant immunity from prosecution that the House impeachment inquiry now has. Are they going to get U.S. Treasury and banks to turn over more records? Are they going to get the National Archives to hand over the thousands of emails where Vice President Biden used fake email addresses communicating with Hunter Biden? What do you see coming? I do think that we'll be able to do all of that. And the inquiry, as Speaker McCarthy said, was the next natural step in this process. It's occasioned by the evidence that we've already uncovered, but we have had some impediments to those investigations. It, normally, when, when, when a, a, a committee of Congress or a group in Congress is doing an investigation, we are limited to legislative purposes. So when you switch into the impeachment inquiry mode, that takes it to another level, and it allows us to pursue those subpoenas more aggressively, and I think we'll We'll have that evidence turned over. Now, we know that well, the White House is going to stonewall on anything we ask them for. We'll go to a court, but I think the judges will look at this differently now that we're in the impeachment inquiry phase. You know, we've got, to what the Congressman just said, Governor, we've got Senators Marsha Blackburn and Tom Cotton now back in the impeachment inquiry. We know Senator Mitt Romney is saying he won't run for re-election. But, Governor, what do you make of the White House Counsel's Office, the top legal office in the White House, sending a talking points memo to the New York Times, CNN, Associated Press, Fox, demanding that we all in the media use it to push back on the impeachment inquiry to help Joe Biden? What do you think of that? Let me first of all say how much of a privilege it is to be on with Congressman Johnson, one of the smartest and most articulate members of the House Republican Caucus, and I great, have great respect for him. The big surprise is not that the White House is sending out this memo. The, the big story is that most of the media will take it and read it almost verbatim on air. That's what's really disturbing. Where are the journalists in this country? They don't exist anymore. And this is proof positive that the White House would have the audacity to think that it can just hand the media talking points and a script and have full expectation that they'll follow it. Yeah, so what the governor just said, it's, uh, it's, it's remindful of, you know, the pressure put on the media to bury the Hunter Biden laptop story before the 2020 election. Congressman, let's listen to House Oversight Chair Comer. He says he has leads on tracing that $10 million bribe that allegedly Joe Biden, Hunter Biden took. Still, that is not validated yet, but I think the House impeachment push is going to try to get to the bottom of that. You're going to watch Democrats pushing back on all this. Watch this. Have you been able to trace that $10 million, do you believe? We're still looking for that. Well, I, as you know, we found you have $20 leads? million. Dollars. We do have leads. Uh, we believe and suspect that there are uh, offshore accounts. What they said in that 1023 form, where they used various bank accounts, that is consistent with what we've seen in Romania, in China, in Russia, and Ukraine. No one knew the Bidens had shell companies. No one knew they had 170 suspicious activity reports where six different banks accused them of money laundering. There are no charges against Joe Biden, and they want to impeach the guy. That's obviously coming from Donald Trump. It would blow your mind if you could see what we've seen in the SARS reports, and the bank records will prove whether or not this happened or not. We have the bank accounts. We can see, ma'am, you can see that the homes that the Bidens own can't be afforded on a, on a congressional or Senate salary. You also understand that it's not normal for family members to receive millions of dollars from overseas interests. Those things aren't normal. That's not normal to have 20 shell, shell country, companies. Congressman, talk to us about the evidence we're seeing so far and what could be coming down the road. Are we here? Are you going to hear more about offshore bank accounts and more shell companies and more about the bribery? We, we are, and that was a good sampling of many of the issues that are on the table. The problem is there's so much corruption here, so much, so many allegations of wrongdoing that it's, it's difficult for people to keep track of. But I do think that we're going to be able to dig in further. We're going to connect a couple of more dots that go directly to Joe Biden himself. And, and here's the point, Liz, you know, when we have credible allegations like this of bribery or other high crimes and misdemeanors, we have no choice but to pursue this and follow the truth where it leads. This is not a political exercise. Article 2, Section 4 of the Constitution says very, very clearly these are impeachable offenses. Bribery is listed there, expressly stated. And so we have to do our duty, uphold our oath to the Constitution, and that's, that's what this is. It's a legitimate inquiry, and we're going to pursue it as far as it goes. So they have to do their duty. They have to do this, Governor. What do you say? 
I think he's exactly right. And Kevin McCarthy is doing it the right way. He's not rushing into an impeachment vote, which if taken right now, would die within five minutes on the Senate floor. There's be no purpose. It would all uh, give Joe Biden and the Democrats a reason to say we're exonerated. Take this patiently and methodically. Don't be in a hurry. I know there are going to be some House Republicans that are itching to go vote for impeachment. It's a big mistake. Don't take the bait. Let this dribble out and get the facts and be absolutely ironclad in your evidence. Then you have a reason to even expect some Democrats will vote with you because they won't have a choice not to vote with you. Got it. Congressman Johnson, Governor Huckabee. Gentlemen, thanks for helping us out this evening. It's a pleasure having you on. Good to see you. Thank you.